everyone, I'm going to try to do this video in one take, so please bear with me. Welcome to my channel. I'm Megan from Fantastic Fertility. I am a certified fertility awareness educator, and today's video is going to be talking about my experience becoming a certified educator through the FEM Health Program. FEM stands for Fertility Education and Medical Management, if you're not familiar. The reason why I'm making this video is because just in the past few days, I've received like five different separate messages from five different people, <laughs> all asking about my experience with them and how I became certified to teach fertility awareness and how my experience went and would I recommend it and blah, blah, blah. All these really great questions. So what I'm going to do is I made a handy dandy list. We're going to go through all the points there and cover the basics. Another thing I will add in is if you are someone who is interested in becoming a FAM educator, if you've been charting your cycles for a while and you feel confident with it, or even if you're new to, chat, to charting with your cycles and new to fertility awareness and you just want to kind of know more information about this for the future, um, I invite you to watch this video. And you can also reach out to me again on Instagram at Fantastic Fertility, and you can always message me there if you have additional questions. And we may even be able to set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session where we can talk back and forth to answer any additional questions you may have. So we're gonna go through. Um, so I signed up for the FEM program. Um, it was a winter session that began on January, I believe, of 2018. And uh, something that I loved about the FEM program going into it and the reasons why I chose it are as follows. Um, number one, I found the communication um, with FEM and the organization to be great. And the reason why this is so important is because if you're working online to become certified with an organization, it's critical that they have good communication with you. I remember reaching out to a couple of different organizations and there was one in particular where I reached out and I didn't even hear back from them for like two weeks. And then when I did, they hadn't even answered any of my questions. So then I emailed them again and I listed out the questions. It was like three questions. I numbered them. It was very clear. <laughs> I emailed them again. Again, it took them like a week to get back to me and they still didn't answer any of my questions. So I was like, hmm, this is problematic because I don't want to be working with an organization only online where I can't even hear back from them if I have specific questions. So I knew going into this that I needed the organization that I chose to have good communication and FEM did. They were always very prompt in getting back to me and if there ever was a delay, it was for a totally valid reason. Um, like for example, if they were grading an assignment of mine and they simply needed more time to grade it, it, it made sense. There was never any like long stretches of time where I just like didn't hear from them. Um, so that was really good. And again, it's just so important because as an educator in training, if you have questions, if you're working with a practice client who needs an answer to something and you don't know the answer, you need to be able to reach out reliably to your organization and ask them. So you can check in with your practice client and get them that answer. So communication, really important, okay? Get it? Good. <laughs> so other reasons why I chose the FEM program was because they actually have not only a FEM health program, but they also have a subset of that called Teen FEM. And so the Teen FEM program is specifically focused on teens and young people and working with them, teaching them about their fertility biomarkers and about charting their cycle, which I feel like is so important. Like, how many times have you heard this or have you said this yourself where you just wish that you had learned about fertility awareness sooner or earlier in your life? I believe strongly that if people are given, you know, accurate information about fertility awareness earlier on in life, A, they'll be more equipped to make choices about their fertility later, and they'll be aware that fertility awareness is a valid, legit option for them to choose from, whether, you know, charting their cycles as a diagnostic tool for health or using it for natural birth control, control or whatever they want to use it for in the future, 
you have to know about it first and it has to be an option to you first. And so I thought that was really valuable, the Teen Fem program. Um, another aspect of them that I loved was the affordability. Some fertility awareness courses can cost um, over $10,000. Yes, you heard that right. <laughs> and I simply could not afford that. That was not accessible to me at the time that I wanted to become an educator and make this my career. And so I couldn't take a program like that. That just wasn't a choice for me. Whereas with FEM, the program ranges from about, I think it's 600 or 650 if you're only doing FEM to 900 total if you're doing FEM and Teen FEM, which is what I chose to do. And then in addition to the affordability, the timeline was also extremely reasonable. I started with FEM in January and then I received my actual certification the following October. So I did the calculation and I think it was just under nine months total that it took me to receive the certification. Um, in terms of the format of the course, um, this is going back to my best memory of it at the time that I took it. So depending on when you see this video, um, this information may or may not be relevant in the future, but at the time that I took it um, from January um, to October 2018, the format was, I believe it was 10 or 11 weeks of weekly group sessions. Um, there was homework and reading each week with quizzes. And then after the group sessions finished, we had a period of time where we, where we were working with practice clients and uh, evaluating their charting, giving them feedback, teaching them the skills to chart, etc. You know, practicing the actual skills that you would need as an educator. Um, and then there's also the final exam to complete. And so that's kind of like the basic structure and format of the course. Other things that I liked about FEM was the focus on cervical mucus and the way that they simplify cervical mucus and standardize the way that it's charted, focusing on its actual physical characteristics instead of vague, you know, kind of nebulous words like sticky, creamy, egg white, watery. Instead, we're looking at the characteristics like what color is the sample, how much does it stretch, etc. So breaking things down to be less subjective and more objective really helps it to click with people and to learn much faster and more effectively. In addition to that, FEM also has a stronger focus on charting for health and focusing on your hormonal health and not just using the method to avoid pregnancy or to achieve pregnancy, but also to really, again, focus on your health because that's kind of what it's all about, right? A healthy chart is going to be easier to read and easier to interpret and therefore easy to, easier to use. You can absolutely still use the method effectively even if you have irregular cycles or sometimes confusing biomarkers. The key is to always work with an instructor to learn the method for yourself if you're going to rely on it for natural birth control. Um, but again, just that focus on hormonal health, I found it to be really important. Okay, so I think I covered all the points on this side of my list. I'm going to flip it over. Um, another benefit that I liked with the FEM program was they allow you the freedom to set your own prices for your course. They also provide you with the basic instructional materials to be able to teach your courses and to work with your clients um, as soon as you complete your certification. So that was a great place for me to start. And being able to set my own prices was really important because I needed that flexibility as a new business owner and as someone who's making a career out of this teaching. Now, I do want to get to some important limitations of the program because they are important to know going into it to have that element of informed choice. So the limitation uh, that's probably the biggest for people to be aware of is that FEM includes the biomarkers cervical mucus and LH testing. I want to stress here that FEM is at its core a symptohormonal method. Sympto being uh, the cervical mucus and hormonal being LH testing. LH testing stands for luteinizing hormone testing. So we know here that FEM is not actually a true symptothermal method. A symptothermal method is one that includes cervical mucus and basal temperature. FEM does not have a temperature protocol 
they do not teach temperatures, they mention it occasionally in the teaching, but again, there is no official protocol for temps in FEM. Um, however, they do welcome people to layer that on as an additional biomarker if they so choose. And so what I do in my teaching is I have, I had actually a lot of experience with symptothermal methods prior to even coming into FEM. And so through my additional research, um, I teach, I do teach in my courses the symptothermal method by including temperatures onto FEM. So in my courses, I teach cervical mucus, LH testing at the core, with uh, temperatures layered onto that um, with both Fahrenheit and Celsius. So uh, basically, if you're becoming an instructor, that element, if you want to include temperatures, it is going to um, require more research on your part and creating your own uh, educational materials based on that research, okay? And then another limitation that I came across was I do wish that there was a little bit more information in the FEM program about um, conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis, and hypothalamic amenorrhea. Um, I won't get into what those conditions are right now, just due to the nature of this video, um, but I do wish that there was a little bit more information about them so that, um, you know, going in and creating my course, I would feel even more prepared to address those concerns. But having said that, again, this is an area where just more additional research on your part as the instructor um, is typically sufficient. With this area, you know, I'm not a doctor. That's not my goal with doing that additional research. I'm not out to diagnose or treat anyone, but as a fertility awareness educator, it's still important to have a basis of understanding for those different conditions so that, you know, when you're looking at people's charts and you're evaluating them, you have um, more tools in your toolbox to help steer your client um, toward resources that may be able to help them. So I think just a bit more of information and a framework for those conditions would have been valuable. Okay, that concludes my notes. My last note here is to uh, please subscribe. <laughs> um, if you've watched this video, if you found it valuable, please subscribe to my channel. I post videos every now and then about these types of topics periods, ovulation, cycles, charting, fertility awareness, breast health, all these different beautiful topics. So I'd love to have you here if you want to join me. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, and you can also always reach me on Instagram at Fantastic Fertility. Okay, I hope everyone has a great day or night whenever they are watching this video. And again, please feel welcome to reach out with more questions. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Okay, bye!